Welcome to another circuit assembly tutorial. In this video we'll be constructing this circuit. It's a double pole double throw relay latching circuit. At the end of this video we'll have a circuit that looks and functions like this. When we push one momentary button an LED lights up and stays lit up. For as long as it doesn't matter we could push this button a thousand times afterwards then it may have no effect on that LED staying on. Basically we had one event, the trigger event, pushing of this button, that turned the double pole double throw relay on. In turn, it turns the LED on. And the way this wiring works is it keeps the relay on even after we have the original event is gone. We're no longer pressing the button. That relay won't turn off. It'll be latched in the on position until its ground connection is broken through this other momentary button. As soon as it's pushed, it unlatches. One event triggers it, keeps it on for whatever duration is needed. Another event unlatches it. And this is a really useful circuit for a lot of applications. It's a mechanical electromechanical solution and anymore we use MOSFETs or there's transistors then there's MOSFETs we have special purpose chips we have all kinds of things from Arduinos whatever it, it's no problem to have one event trigger another and keep it on for whatever duration you would want until something else occurs and then it switches off the Arduino allows us to control individual pins in that way through code. But this is a traditional electromechanical solution to that kind of problem. And it's really useful. Some people, a lot of people starting out, want to build like a home security system, some sort of system that an event occurs, say a magnetic switch is broken or pulled open and it turns on an alarm and they don't want that alarm to go off when the doors closed back or the beam if it's a laser tripwire setup that's really popular amongst hobbyists starting out if the beam is reestablished they want their alarm to keep going off until someone comes in enters a code or pushes a button that the intruder doesn't know about and that's exactly what this kind of latching relay circuit is good for if one event occurs it'll turn on and until some other event happens it won't turn off it'll stay latched in an on position there's your turn on event it'll be there you imagine your little alarm or buzzers going off and it won't turn off until that second event occurs whatever it may be and we'll be building a circuit but this circuit is not really hard to build but some people starting out have trouble understanding how it functions given that it's using a double pole double throw relay and so in this video we'll not only build a circuit but we'll go through an explanation of how just relays in general work and especially this particular double pole double throw kind of relay how it works in this context to get started how does a typical relay work just a single pole single throw relay it's extremely simple you just have a coal that when we run power through this coal it generates an electromagnetic field that toggles or flips a switch that's on a common or center pole there may be different configurations but they all work basically the same there'll be a normally closed contact which all that means is that your flipper or your switch will be in toward the position of that pole and you can have something hooked up to this running or not in the context of the circuit we're going to build this will be just empty then you'll have this center flipper think of a pinball machine that can flip back and forth based on whether this coal is energized and so the normally closed is when your switch or your connected to the central pole or your flipper is in the position in the direction of that particular contact. As you're normally closed, you can make it even more explicit and call it the contact, which is what it is. So with your normally closed contact, all that means is that your central switch that's it common to both the normally open and the normally closed poles, it's going to be pointed toward the normally closed contact when the coal is not energized and 
you could, like I said, you could have something connected through this. You will have continuity between your common pole and your normally closed pole when the relay's coil is not energized. And, well, what is the normally open pole? Well, the normally open pole is just, well, the opposite of the normally closed. It's the one that you will not have continuity between your center pole or your common pole the flipper articulates on, you won't have continuity between the normally open pole and that common switch or that central switch. So normally what happens is you hook the circuitry you want the relay to turn on and off like this. Let's just do an example. Say that you want to have an LED turn on. And this could be a house light whatever and you have your LED connected to your normally open pole and then the other side of the LED is connected to some power source and then you would have your ground connected to the common or the center pole at this point this LED won't light up because there's no continuity the circuit is open there's a break in this circuit. But as soon as you energize the coil, you apply power, say, to one side of the coil, VCC, and then you ground the other side of the coil, that energizes the relay. And in turn, flips that central switch up, making an actual path between the VCC that your LED and resistors hook to the normally open pole now the electricity has a path it can travel down from power to ground in turn lighting up the LED that's all there is to it and then as soon as this coal loses voltage or current say we push a button and disconnect the VCC or we disconnect the ground the coal, the electromagnetic field it's generating, collapses and our central switch flips back to the normally closed position. Energizing the coal flips it up, taking the energy away, lets the switch relax back down in the normally closed state. You can see it in a, another diagram that I drew that as soon as this relay is energized, this is your energized state, the central switch will be flipped from the normally closed pole up to the normally open pole. That in turn will normally be making a circuit that allows the electricity to flow through whatever load you have hooked up here. And notice that one of the great things about a relay, so it's just like an opto-isolator, is that this power supply need not be the same as this power supply. So you could have, if you have a 5 volt relay, you, that means that it only would take 5 volts to energize this coil. But you could have 110 AC, depending on the type of relay, and a lamp up here. As long as this relay can dissipate enough wattage and it can deal with enough amperage, you could, in principle, hook whatever AC device you wanted to the normally open pole and use that center flipper, the common pole, with the switch connected to it, back to ground or back to neutral, depending on what kind of AC device, if you use an extension cord or whatever. And you can see how AC with the live wire versus the neutral wire, I mentioned it in a video previously about how to use a solid state relay and a sound detector to turn on a lamp. You could just as well use a mechan electromechanical relay like we're going to use today to do the same thing. The major difference though is that there's not an optical isolation and this doesn't guarantee zero crossing. Like this could, you could energize that coal and the, the AC wave could be down, it could be up. It, you just don't get the same level of protection you normally will in a solid state relay controlling AC stuff. But mechanical relays have been used to do so for years and years and years. And they run elevators to robots to whatever. It's just the downside to a relay 
is that you can't really pull, use a pulse width modulation signal and run it through here to control the speed of whatever if it's a motor to a robot wheel. You can't use pulse width modulation in a relay for one thing because it's electromechanical and it takes time for this little flipper to go back and forth back and forth. It's not instant like a MOSFET or almost instant. It still takes time to, for a MOSFET to turn on or a transistor. But with electromechanical relay it's a lot slower. And so normally what you do with a relay is you're using a relay for something you want to turn on and stay on until some other event occurs. That's where a latching relay circuit comes in so useful and handy. Now hopefully that explanation gives people a good sense of how just a plain old single pole single throw relay would work. Like I mentioned, the orientation of these three pins may be stretched out all over the relay. You'll always want to look at the package your relay comes in or look up its data sheet to see which poles on your actual package. Like here's the double pole double throw that we'll use. And I've just used half of it. Just these three pins. And there's your coil pins. It may be a little hard to see in the video, but we'll zoom in in just a second and see. But the orientation may be different. You may have two pins down here, two pins down here, and one over in the corner with a single pole, single throw. But if you look at the image and draw it out, enlarge it, you'll notice that all of them are going to have a normally closed, a normally open, and a common pole. Most any you'll get is a hobbyist or inventor or whatever. And all that means is that the normally closed pole is where your central switch is when no energy, no power is being applied to the coal. The coal is not energized, that's where the flipper is. Whereas when it's energized, the flipper will move or the switch will flip up or down or sideways, whatever the orientation to make continuity between the normally open pole and the common pole. And that's the most most normal way place where people hook their load to. You don't have to. Like I said, you could have your load connected to the central pole and the normally closed so that when the coal is not energized the circuit is made and then when you want to turn the circuit off you energize the relay. You could do that. There's nothing to stop one from doing it. It's just relative to the application that you're using. This being said, if there's other questions about how just the relays work in general, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. And if there's a whole lot of questions, I can create another video with a single pole, single throw circuit and talk through that. Let's build our latching circuit. In order to build this circuit, the first thing one will need is a double pole, double throw relay. It, this is one I picked up at Radio Shack. I'll put the parts numbers in the description and it's a 12 volt double pole double throw relay. Well, what does that mean, double pole double throw? Well first off it's going to mean just practically that there will be six pins normally. There will be six pins on one side and there will be two pins on the other side if you get one that's halfway breadboard friendly. And what will the schematic look like? Well it will look similar to this. And so think back to the schematic we just looked at. We'll end up having two normally closed poles, namely these two, these bottom two poles, will be normally closed. Then we'll have two central common pins where our switch is located. There's two common pins and we'll have two normally open pins at the top of the relay, namely those two. And then we'll have a coil located at the bottom with the two pins that are separated by some distance from the actual contacts. And it, double pole, well here's one central pole, there's the second central pole. And the pole is referring to where your switch, or if you want to think of a pinball flipper, where your flipper is connected. That's its point, its stationary point that it flips to one direction or another around. Double pole, double throw, meaning that they're in their relaxed state right now, and when you energize this coal, it'll throw both of these flippers up at the same time. So two common poles, two throws when the relay is energized. That's all it means to say it's a double pole, double throw relay. And 
when building a latching circuit, it's always easiest to start out simple. Let's start real simple and just think, what do we want to do? We want to turn on an LED and keep that LED on until some other event occurs. So we can start out by just attaching our LED. Say so here's VCC. It could be the 12 volts needed to drive this coil or it could be some other voltage. It could be 5 volts. It could be the 110, 240, whatever your relay can withstand. The specifications will matter. But we have some power source. In our case, it's for an LED and we'll be using the same power source that's driving the coil. But that's really not typical. Normally, this will be a separate power source entirely. Because notice that there is no connection between the coal or what's happening on these contacts. So you can have some totally different power source over there. Normally that's exactly what you want too. But for our purposes we use the same power source on the breadboard. But we have our positive voltage. Then we'll have our LED. We'll have a resistor. And then connect it to the normally open pin. There's our LED. And then we'll take ground and connect it to the central common pin. At this, at this point, the LED won't be on because there's a break in the circuit. that The electrons have no way to flow. They, until this pole, the, the switch on this pole flips up to the normally closed position, this circuit will not be made. Well, how could we attempt to turn this on and off? Well, we have to have some way to energize this coil. So we can go to connect. In our case, it's going to be 12 volts DC. We'll have to one side. And then we can come off if we want to have con total control. We can come out here, drop down and then just put a momentary button, a normally open momentary button, and then have that button run to ground. That's all we would need. At this point, let me scroll out. So all I've done is we now have the voltage to go to the coal, but it won't, the electrons won't flow until our button is pressed making a ground connection. So this LED, what it happens, we push the button, energizes the coal, slings that flipper up, allowing a path for the electrons to flow through the contact that would be in the open position at that point. It would go up. And when we l turn loose of our button, the flipper will relax back down, you go back to the normally closed state, the LED will be off. So that's all we'd have to do to control that LED with this relay with just a push of a momentary button. But how might we be able to keep that LED on even when we release this momentary button? That's where the latching part of the circuit comes in. And it's really simple to do. All that we need is an alternative path so that 12 volts can still flow through the relay even after we release that momentary button. That's all we need. And how could we do that? Well, the first thing we, we can use the other side of this relay. Namely, we could connect the common, run a wire from common to the upper part of our switch. At this point, our 12 volts could travel through the coal when we energize it it could run through here and then it could run up this line and be waiting at that common pole. Well then we need a return path to get it back to ground when this flipper goes up like that. Well all we need is another wire coming from the normally open pin running down to well, where? To the other side of our momentary button. At this point when Say we push the momentary button down. Say this is closed. 
there's continuity between here. What happens? The coal energizes, this flips up, turning on our LED. So we have our LED on, but at the same time, this pole flips up and creates continuity between those. So now we have what? We have our 12 volts running through our coal and it can run up this wire through this contact back down through this wire all the way down back to this point and well what's at this point? Oh! Ground! So in this configuration the circuit would be on, not only the LEDs on, but we have power running through back to ground so the coal is now energized regardless if we let loose of this like if we turn we turn loose of the momentary button say it bounces back up breaking connection between these two now we still have 12 volts energizing the coal and going to ground well where's our second event how do we stop it this would be a relay that you push the button one time whatever your load is LED or whatever is on but you have no means of turning it off it's just on indefinitely as it's currently wired so what we need is some way to break the ground connection or break any of these this path from 12 volts that's running through to ground we need a way to interrupt or open that circuit easy enough to do we can add in what's known as a normally closed button meaning that there's continuity across both of its poles when it's not pushed and then when we want to stop this circuit from running we just push this button down and it breaks the connection to ground and now we would have a way to push the normally open momentary button meaning that there is no continuity across its poles we push the button that energizes the coal Boom flips this switch up, turns the LED on, while at the same time flips this other switch which allows 12 volts to run through all the way bypassing our momentary button to ground. And given that this is a normally closed button over here, there will be continuity across it until we push it down. So it's just like there's a solid piece of wire in there until we push this button down. And that's basically all there is to how a latching relay circuit works. You have one button, a normally open button that you push, or you could have a transistor here that you switch it by applying 5 volts to its base. And it closes down, turns on the relay. Then that turns on your load and bypasses that transistor and runs through another transistor that you already had 5 volts applied to which is serving as just like a piece of wire and then to turn the load off you remove the 5 volts from the base of that transistor so you would have 5 volts turning it on if it's an NPN you have 5 volts to this already and then you just drop the voltage to 0 on the transistor here breaking the circuit turning your load off so let's build the circuit now I hope that's enough explanation Here's the completed circuit diagram. Once again, that's what we're going to build. First thing we'll need is a breadboard. And we can zoom in so that everyone can see. We'll need to put our double pole, double throw relay into our breadboard. I've added a little diagram of how the contacts are laid out so that viewers can tell the orientation of the relay and where the wires are going. We just put our relay into the board and what is the first thing we need to do? We can look back at our circuit. On the top of the relay, the normally open pin, this one, the very top, we can connect a wire from our VCC to our LED through our 1K resistor. We have our LED paying attention to its orientation. There's the flat side. The long leg will go into VCC. So we're using this leg as the wire. And then we can take our 1K 
5K resistor and connect it to our normally open pole on our relay. Just like that. This pole is in that channel of the relay. Here's our LED. The two of them are in the same row. So we have VCC to the LED through a 1K resistor to the normally open pole of our relay. Then, so we have this part of the circuit completed. Now we need a, a wire from the common central pole where the switch is located to ground. It's easy enough. Piece of wire. There's a piece of wire from the common pole, this row of the breadboard, to ground. And we don't need anything connected to the normally closed. So moving right along, we need 12 volts, or we need a power wire basically to the left hand side of our coil. Let's do that. Here's our coil. Yep. So we have 12 volts going to our coil. And notice in this diagram, I have a diode that's in reversed biased position, meaning that the bar on the diode is pointed toward 12 volts, which means current won't flow. This diode will stop current from flowing this way, whereas it will allow it coming from this way. And so someone might say, well, what is the purpose of that diode? Well, this is an electromagnetic coil. And when it energizes, it creates an electromagnetic field. And then when it de-energizes, that field collapses. And it will shoot the voltage up in the line enough to blow out a transistor, as well as it can, in principle, damage the contacts on some of our buttons. Even though, you know, this contact, remember a momentary button, when you push it, it bounces. So it could arc across here, but generally you put this in to protect microcontrollers, you protect transistors, and we're just doing a demonstration with these momentary buttons, but I think it makes sense to go ahead and set it up as though you normally would in a circuit where you're using something besides momentary buttons. And so that's why this is a 1N401, you could use a shock key, like 1N1589 would would turn on and off a little quicker, which might be a little better, but this is the standard value, just normal, plain, generic diode. Then you put it in the reverse bias position on both sides of the coil, as close as you can get it to the coil. Then what happens is when this coil is energized and the electromagnetic field collapses, well, instead of going through and destroying our transistor or switch, that field has this diode to loop back and forth through the coil around and around until it dissipates. So this is just a safety diode. To add that in, here's the diode. It has the bar on one side. That is the cathode side. The anode side does not have the bar. The positive voltage could flow this direction, but not this direction. And so all we have to do is add it in to both sides of our coil. that. We have our power wire, same row, the cathode side of the diode, and then on the other side of the coil there's the anode side of the diode. That's all there is to it, to get started at least. Moving right along. What do we do from here? Well we have our coil, we've got our diode in place, now we need our wire going to our momentary button. So we can put in our momentary button and this wire. This is the normally open momentary button, meaning that there is no continuity across each side of it until the button is pushed. Just general run of the mill, normally open momentary button. No problem, no mystery. Now we need a wire from this side of the coil to one side of the momentary button. Easy enough. And then we can keep on going with our 
schematic. We have a normally open button. We've got a wire connected to this pole. Now we can connect another wire through a normally closed momentary button to ground. I've just soldered on two wires onto this normally closed momentary button. That means that there's continuity across these two poles when the button is not pressed. Then when I press it, it opens the circuit or breaks the connection between these two wires. And I'll put the parts number. I picked this up at Radio Show. We just plug it in to one side, the other side of our momentary button, then connect the other end of it to ground. Just like that. At this point, we should be able to push this button and what would happen with that LED? Well, it's only going to stay on when the button is pushed and it's going to go off as soon as this momentary button is released. You can test that at this point. We can. I'm using this 12 volt battery pack. You could use other sorts of battery packs. We'll just plug it in to our breadboard. And we can put just a decoupling capacitor in case whatever our load happens to be. In the case of an LED, it doesn't matter, but it's normally good practice. Go ahead and decouple your power supply so that you have a sort of built-up charge. So that when, those, when that contact flips back and forth, you have a little storage space of charge. And then we can put our battery in. And if we've done this right, what should happen is you push this button, the LED should come on. And when we turn loose of the button, it should go off. See? Push the button, the LED's on, turn it off, the LED turns off. Because this is a normally closed switch. And note, and note that these switches, they're touches. This is not the highest of quality of switch, and sometimes you kind of have to bounce them a little bit and then use your meter to make sure you actually have continuity between these two lines if you buy the same kind of switch. Is that it's not of the highest caliber, but it works. And so if you push your button, if you've wired everything up and it doesn't, it, it's not turning on and off the LED like this, mess with this button and make sure the contacts are actually closed when it's not being pushed. So, we're almost all the way through with our latching circuit. But what we want is to be able to push this button and that light stay on, even when we release the momentary button until we push this one. So, let's finish the circuit. Unplug our power supply. What do we do from this point forward? We just need to add in these two wires on the other pole and throw of this double pole double throw relay. We can start with the wire on the common. Where does it go? It leaves this central common pin, goes down, and it enters in above our momentary switch or on the same row in the breadboard as our momentary switch. That's the first wire we can run. Here's the common pole. I'll just use a jumper wire. Use a green one. There's to our norm. This is the common center pin that the flipper rests on. And then we can put it in just same row as that black wire going to the other side of our switch or our normally open momentary button. Let's move to the next one. We've got our normally open pole on our relay. At the very top, we need a wire that comes off of it. And where does it go? It goes all the way down to the other side of our switch. Basically, it's bypassing this normally open momentary button. How do we do that? Well, here's another wire. We can hook it in to that position. 
the top of the relay. This is the normally open pole of the relay. And then jump it around the other side of our momentary button. I'm just going to move this over a few. Give myself some room. And then put it in there. And what this is doing is effectively bypassing this momentary button. When the relay is energized, current voltage will be able to pass through this green wire, go through the switch, and then still make it back to ground through this normally closed switch. If all is well, we should be done with the circuit. Let's hook the power back up. Now we should be able to push the momentary button and that LED will stay on indefinitely until we push this normally closed button to release it. LED's on and it'll stay on. We can do a dance, we can we could have our alarm going off, and we have our elevator traveling up to the top position, whatever, and then let's use the elevator as an application. This is a person they pushed a floor number on the panel of the elevator. This relay is controlling the winch up at the top, the winch motor. That motor's turning. They're going up to the say the twentieth, the fiftieth floor. And say it eventually gets to the top. And the top of the elevator hits a limit switch. Boop. Stops the elevator. Then someone gets in, they say, Oh, I want to go to the fifth floor. They select fifth floor. The elevator starts going down. When it gets to the bottom, hits a limit switch, gets to the fifth floor, elevator stops. That's all there's to it. Well, I hope this particular video has been helpful on how to build an, an explanation of how such a thing even works. But especially how to build a double pole, double throw latching relay circuit. If you like this video, please consider clicking like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Here's the schematic one more time for those who might want to copy it down and attempt to build this circuit on their own. Like I said, the parts used in this video, the numbers will be in the description. And until next time.